the chair is not here yet and the vice chair i don't see duck uh we can wait a minute if they show up hi greetings everyone oh okay welcome um, Right on time there. So let's start this. Uh, I'm Todd Byerther, the chair of the Legislative Committee for the Washington State Building Code Council. Uh, this is our our Legislative Committee meeting for February 12th, I believe today, 2021. Uh, let's start by calling roll, please. Todd? Here. Dirk Or. Dayan? Uh, I see Diane, but she's muted. De yeah, okay. Okay, there we go. I'm here. Uh, Andrew? Jill Anderson? Phil? Present. Okay, so we have one, two, three present, and we have one, two, three uh, missing and uh, I think we can go ahead the alleged committee uh, will not have a vote we have three present and three missing so we do not have quorum we do not okay so, so thank you for that we'll we'll move on and we won't take any committee action until we we, we gain a, a fourth um, is there anyone from the public that would like to be recognized during this committee meeting. Uh, yeah, good morning, everyone. This is Terry Beals, just listening in um, from Sound Transit. Thank you, Terry. This is Kevin Dwell with Northwest National Natural, just listening in. Thank you. Okay. Um, we, well, let's not take any action. So let's just, um, I hear someone jumping in here. Let's just move right into legislative update, if that's okay. And then we'll come back on the actual items for to review and approve agenda in, in minutes. And uh, uh, before I start with the, with the updates, uh, I, I, I need to mention that we have uh, uh, a few guests today. Uh, uh, I don't see Anne Larson, the DES Director of uh, Government Relations, but uh, uh, oh, she- here. Oh, you're here. Okay, sorry, I didn't, I didn't see you. Uh, and we have uh, Dirk, uh, he's our new assistant attorney general and I, I'm still practicing his last name, so I don't want to say it right now. It's Meyer Bachtel, Stoyan. Meyer, oh, oh, okay, I'll work with you later on that. That was spelled. Yeah, <laughs> and I think I think I saw uh, Dave. Yep, right here, your old AAG. Yes, well, he's not old, he's just not, anymore yeah, yeah. He, he he's a young guy uh and uh they will uh talk to us a little bit and and i will let them later uh uh they will clarify what they'll be talking about and they'll be here to answer uh, uh your questions if if uh, some questions arise okay story todd this is todd would you prefer to um to spend the agenda and do that first uh, yeah, uh, totally up to you if, if you'd yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, it will be nice and no quorum yet, so it will be yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think we can and, and need to make a motion for that, right? <laughs> uh, no, we can't. We can't, right? So let's just move straight into into that uh, that other business and welcome our our guest. Thanks. Uh, it's nice to meet some of you. I understand, of course, that this isn't the whole council, and so I'm looking forward to uh, participating in the council uh, meetings going forward, including next Friday. Uh, I've decided to take the lead, Anne and Dave, just because why not? I'll so, sort of set the stage here. Uh, let you uh, let you all know that one reason why we were attending this meeting today is just a, a, first a quick opportunity for me to say hi and and. Um, if you have any questions about me or uh, my background, I welcome that. We'll, we'll talk some more as the full council. But then second, 
Um, Stoyan has indicated that uh, some questions have arisen from members of this committee regarding um, how to engage with legislators during legislative session. Uh, and we wanted to be available to talk a little bit about maybe some of the legal rules governing that and, and the relationship with DES. Um, the, we, we operate under a strange statute, at least strange for me as an attorney with fresh eyes on this, uh, where we have a council uh, that's created by law with rulemaking authority, uh, but uh, a, a sort of a parent agency, DES, who's responsible for, uh, among other things, uh, hiring and employing uh, staff for the council. And uh, not all agencies are like that. And, and there's a potentially a little bit of tension. I don't mean like emotional tension, but legal tension that could arise uh, under that. So we wanted to uh, talk a little bit about that if questions arise. But uh, primarily, uh, I thought if, unless, Anne, did you have anything you wanted to, to say? I have a couple of remarks I prepared to make. No, I just, I, I participated in a, a meeting two weeks ago and some of the questions came up. And I think that this is a great opportunity for um, the members here um, if there are questions, then we can prepare something for the full um, full building code, if, if that's something, because I know there's been a lot of interest and questions, and we're here to maybe get some feedback from you, see if there's something that should be presented to the full council, and yeah, just available. Uh, but as you know, I am the government relations director for DES, so my role is doing advocacy for DES, and I help support the state building code council. But again, advocacy is not the role that I have just given you know, where I sit within DES. So yeah, available for questions and, and happy to help. Great. I, I wanted to uh, uh, just, as I said, make some some kind of brief uh, remarks about the law. You know, the, the questions that arise that, that you all might have as council members, uh, um, you know, they're legal doctrines and principles that uh, kind of create background rules that help answer most of them. Um, and questions regarding engaging with the legislature really implicate um, uh, chapter 4217 of the revised code of Washington. Uh, that's the, those are the state statutes that govern um, lobbying. And lobbying, as I think probably most of you know, or all of you know, is regulated by the PDC, uh, the Public Disclosure Commission here in Washington State. So board members are officers of uh, the board or commission uh, or council here uh, that they serve on and accordingly uh, are subject to the regulatory requirements uh, of um, the uh, lobbying statutes and are under the jurisdiction of the uh, PDC. Uh, often get questions of what is lobbying? Generally speaking, Lobbying is when an individual or business or entity seeks to influence, we'll talk specifically here about legislation. So if, uh, a, um, if the council, for example, or any board or commission, public agency wants to uh, uh, ask the legislature to support a legislative initiative, a bill, uh, or oppose it, uh, that would be lobbying under the law. Answering questions about what the council does or questions about what happens in the field or, or specialized technical issues that uh, the members of the council are, are experts at uh, wouldn't necessarily be lobbying if it's not, uh, if the member of the council or the council is not uh, urging uh, a certain policy. So sometimes there could be some confusion about that. Am, am I lobbying if a legislator wants to know from me, uh, you know, what the law says on something? Well, that's not lobbying. That's answering a legislator's question. Likewise, if I was to meet me as a, a attorney working for the attorney general's office, were to meet with a legislative staffer and say, uh, hey, I'm going to answer some questions regarding the law, that's not lobbying. If I were to go in there on behalf of the agency, the attorney general's office, my employer, and say, hey, the AGO urges you to support Senate Bill 1527, that's lobbying. Um, but that's okay. That's something that's legally authorized uh, under statute. 
Um, but there has to be reporting. And so uh, that's where the PDC's reporting requirements come in. I don't want to get into the details of those, uh, but suffice to say that's an issue that can trip up uh, agency staff, uh, board members, uh, is uh, um, when that reporting is required and what should be in that reporting. So that's kind of a broad uh, uh, kind of summation, right, of what, what the laws require. Um, as again, though, I want to stress here as board members, board members are subject to um, the PDC re regulations and to the underlying statute, uh, even though you're in a voluntary, a volunteer position rather, right? So if you're ever in a position where you're engaging with legislators, you need to be clear about what hat you're wearing. If it's something you're doing on behalf of the um, of the council, uh, there are reporting requirements, potentially ethics requirements that arise, and it would need to be coordinated. Need to be clear about um, you know how you're going about doing that work and how it's going to ultimately be reported to the PDC. Doesn't mean you can't do it outside. So you know you're all professionals. You you live in a professional world. You're citizens. You can uh, you know advocate on behalf of yourself personally. Uh, even if you, some of you might be registered lobbyists uh, for the respective uh, businesses that you work for. That's not a conflict. You can continue to do that work on behalf of those uh, businesses. Um, but there needs to be, well, I shouldn't say it's not a conflict. It potentially could be a conflict, right? There's political implications to that and maybe ethical implications too that you would need to be pretty clear about before you uh, engage in lobbying activities um, that may be at odds or adverse to uh, the position of uh, the council. Uh, and the PDC can help uh, give some guidance to, uh, to you in that capacity if you're interested in, in where the lines are. Um, and we certainly, the Attorney General's Office can help provide guidance uh, to Stoyan and to you as a member of the, the council as to whether the activities you're doing on behalf of the council uh, are uh, reportable to the PDC and lobbying activities. I just want to pause here and ask, do council members have any questions specific to, I know there were several that came up. Is there a clear understanding or are there specific questions that you have um, for either Derek, Dave or myself that we can help with? This is Todd. I have an individual question, but I would like to first ask Diane as, as the Council Chair and, and kind of senior member here, do, do you have any anything from your experience and background on the council that you'd like to bring up in this forum? In this forum, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm aware of um, potential conflicts, and you know, I just I want to stress that we we do have to be very careful of that. Um, I do have a question that just came up, and I haven't had a chance to talk to Stoyan because this just came through my email. Um, about one of our issues that's coming up later. And um, this organization wants me, well, they want the full council, but I told them that's not, that's not gonna happen. You can't do that. But um, they wanted, they directed it to me and they wanted me to talk to one of the legislators, legislators regarding a specific bill and the intent. So if I, I'm not gonna offer any opinion, but if I just listen to that legislator and say, you know, he wrote the bill, what is the intent of it and get that information, can I do that? Well, um, you, you know, again, we have, there might be some more details here that are relevant, but from what you're describing to me, Diane, that does not sound like lobbying. Um, you're not asking for um, the legislator to take action on a specific bill. You're just asking, hey, what did this bill mean? What was your thinking uh, behind the bill? Um, that is normal communications that folks have with legislative staff and with legislators and uh, would not be something generally uh, that I would expect would need to be reported as lobbying because it wouldn't meet the definition of lobbying. Okay, thank you. Again, I should say though, if there are specific, uh, these specific questions uh, are ones that um, there might be some nuance to them depending on, on you know, um, 
specifically what it is you want to talk about and you know, communicating with the PDC can be helpful. They can help give some more clarity regarding what's okay and what's not okay. And of course, conversations can kind of take on a life of their own, right, Diane? You know, they right. talk about it, <laughs> suddenly you start talking about a bill and that's where you need to be careful. Okay, thank you for that. And I will just add um, one of the things as DES with um, all of the folks, I, I oversee the bill analysis, um, the work that's done for the agency and state building code council and Stoyan falls underneath of that. And with bill analysis, um, staff analyze bills based on changes and implications to law fiscal impacts, but those bill analysis are essentially to remain, what are those impacts of the bill? It doesn't take into account any personal um, beliefs. They identify stakeholders that may be impacted, but again, it's not advocating for those particular stakeholders. So acknowledging that um, an agency like Department of Health may have implications, so there can be some coordination so that the implementation can occur. Um, I have often um, gone in front of legislators talking about those nuances and providing in a neutral way, education on, on some of the challenges with implementation or fiscal impacts, because of course, uh, DES is not allowed to advocate for a bill that is not included in the governor's budget, which is another, uh, our budget is um, created by the governor's office and approved by that. So things that are outside of that, you know, we're not authorized to advocate for as well, unless it's included in the governor's budget. So. One of those nuances about what Stowen's been doing is he's been doing bill analysis in a neutral way about the implications for how that that bill would you know move forward in implementation or fiscal impacts rather than um, the stakeholders' voices being represented in those bill analysis. I know that was a question that came up, Diane. I've got a question and just one comment also. I was on the phone earlier and I don't know if everyone's muted on the phone or not, but I couldn't um, get through. Uh, just a comment in case anyone else is on the phone. But um, my question is, I both sit on the council and also I represent some clients that um, do have um, interest in legislative issues. Now they hire their own lobbyists, so I don't do any lobbying for them, uh, but I am sometimes included in emails being CC'd um, so I guess my question would be, is that reportable or since, um, you know, if anything, I would answer a technical question and I'm just being CC'd on lobbying emails. Um, there's no reason to report that. That's a, that's a good question. Um, the one thing I want to be careful about doing here is, you know, my advice to you all and answers that I would provide to questions would be as my role as the council to the council, right? Uh, and if, I can offer kind of a broad overview of what my understanding of the law is, but if there are specific legal questions and uh, that arise in lobbying work that you know companies or businesses or associations that you're separately working with, um, th those will probably be best directed to lawyers for them or for the to the PDC. But I will say, if you're simply, generally, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, generally speaking, uh, a um, being copied on something shouldn't be a uh, wouldn't constitute lobbying. Uh, it would take an affirmative act. In fact, one thing I didn't mention is it's an in-person meeting. Technically, is lobbying. So even a phone call uh, under the uh, under the statute and under the PDC's regulation wouldn't technically count as lobbying. That's not to say that it shouldn't be reported. Transparency is very good. Um, but technically speaking, it's not. And for those who are wondering, well, what about a Zoom call like this? The PDCs made clear this this year that uh, Zoom calls uh, that take place in lieu of in-person meetings are reportable. Thank and you for gonna, that. I was going to add to that because I do the the lobbying report to the PDC for the agency, so it is all in-person and Zoom meetings only. And so, for example, if Stone was to uh, provide some uh, technical help and go with me to see, see a legislature, I would include that as part of my PDC report that he participated in a meeting in person and what the, the subject of that meeting would be as far as my reporting. Now, one other thing I just want to offer up some caution for folks is if, if you in, in your non-council life, when you're not wearing that council cap, 
are engaged in work that potentially is at odds of the work of the council. Um, you want to be careful about that. We never want, even if it's not a violation of the Ethics Act, it potentially could be seen as one, and that could create some some challenges, some pushback, some requests for further inquiry. And uh, so, we want to be careful about that in general. And um, we we can help Stoyan uh, provide guidance on how best to police that. This is this is Todd. I want to first thank thank you all for for coming. I think this is uh, of interest and concern to many of the council members. And what one area I would like to request and then follow up on is is some guidance on how to declare our certain affiliations in in different situations. Whether you know I, I'm I've been a state employee for a while, and so I'm very comfortable in roles of informing and you know, declaring as a state employer for Washington State University or a representative of state Washington State University or University, or as a plan commissioner of the city of Spokane, I'm a little fuzzier if I as a subject matter expert in my in for profit am testifying in front of legislature and how to make sure I declare those 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 public roles. Yeah, we can we can work with you offline to and you know, to uh, help provide some greater clarity. Thank you. And I should probably be involved in those discussions too. This is Andrew again. Great. Yeah, the good news is none of these questions that are arising are unique to the council, right? So uh, there is guidance out there and material that we can refer you to. Okay, any other questions from the council members? Stoyan, anything else? Uh, no, I, I think we have a, a, a quorum now. Um, yes, we do. Uh, uh, I see Andrew and I heard him. And uh, I uh, wanna thank you, uh, Anne, Dirk, and uh, uh, Derek, uh, Dave, for uh, participating and uh, uh, clearing things up. And uh, Anne mentioned the uh, coordination between DES and the council and, and uh, uh, she did a good job uh, uh, making the connection with the Department of Health and we exchanged uh, several emails on uh, uh, House, uh, House Bill 1184. Uh, this is the one for on-site uh, non-potable water systems. Uh, this bill, we discussed it a couple of weeks ago, requires uh, uh, the Department of Health to consult and coordinate with the State Building Code Council when developing rules related to on-site non-potable water systems. And our concern was the effective date, July 1st, 2022. Well, the folks from the Department of Health clarified that they never intended to involve the council for uh, and push the council to develop any new uh, plumbing uh, 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 code uh, uh, requirements. They want to concentrate on the water quality. So it was a good, uh, a good thing to know, even though the bill is still uh, uh, not is still going on, but we, we got in writing information that is important uh, for the council. So it was, thank you, Anne, it was a good, uh, good effort. And I, uh, I also, I was going to say, and I forgot at the beginning, but uh, uh, Dirk will be attending the, uh, the council meeting and uh, we will have the alleged report there. So if, if questions arise there, uh, he may be able to uh, provide some, uh, some guidance. Okay. Okay, well, thank you for all that. Uh, thank you for attending. Should we try to retroactively go back now and uh, now with quorum? I'll need a little guidance here, Stoyan and Diane. Can we uh, can we start with item number two and review and approve the agenda as <laughs> already amended? <laughs> Still moved. Okay. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Abstentions? Thank you. So approved. Item number three, then we will review and approve the February 5th, 2021 minutes. Can you hear a motion, please? Motion to approve. 
Thank you. Second. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Abstentions? So approved, thank you. Okay, now item number four, legislative update, please, Stoy. I already mentioned uh, housing bill, uh, House Bill 1184. And uh, if, uh, Krista, can you go up a little bit? Uh, no, 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 the, um, a little bit more, oh, right there, right there, right there. So on, on the pledge log, you will see below the amended House Bill 1184, uh, I try to provide some summary from the emails that I exchanged with the Department of Health. So I, I'm not gonna read everything there, but it's for you uh, um, kind of uh, uh, additional information, uh, what was the conversation about and, and uh, where are we with uh, uh, the conversation with the Department of Public Health. I'm not gonna cover it again, but it's for you to, uh, for your information. So, Krista, I'm sorry for the, uh, can, can you go now to February 12th? Okay, the first one is the amended uh, uh, House Bill uh, 1287. This is for uh, EV uh, infrastructure. And uh, the modification and the amendment in the bill doesn't doesn't really uh, concern uh, the state code, uh, code council. It just clarifies that the council may be periodically updated after July 1st, 2024. So this is, this is the addition for this bill. And what I need to clarify is the last column when I have many cities and counties already have requirements for EV charging exceeding the state mandates, which is, which is uh, a fact. And I was trying to provide an example. I think instead of clarification, I provided confusion. Uh, what I meant uh, saying that in some areas due to weather and other constraints, uh, the new rules electric, uh, related to EV charging may have impact on stakeholders. The example I was uh, uh, going to make and that didn't work out very well was that in some rural and uh, mountain areas, the electric vehicles are not uh, uh, popular because uh, the weather, if, 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 the, if it's too cold or too hot, uh, the battery is not that, not that much efficient. Or if the folks need four-wheel drive vehicles in the mountain areas, uh, there are not very many electric vehicles uh, uh, available. So uh, uh, very often in areas like this, uh, there will be uh, complaints about uh, new EV uh, uh, charging regulations. It was the intent of this uh, uh, example, just I wanted to clarify it. So when we go down to the amended House Bill 1084, this is for so-called the energy bill. And what you see in yellow, our concern, the council concern was that the originally proposed bill was changing the effective date from 2031 to 2027. So one hot cycle earlier. Well, surprisingly, surprisingly enough, uh, the amended bill restores the current uh, requirement. So the date was restored back to 2031 in the way it was. I, 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 yes. Oh, sorry. I was just going to comment on this one very carefully, pass it out of the committee and, and Representative Rommel. You know, and the way he presented it was he was willing to set back for a year and, and re engage this in a supplemental year. So if, if that scenario actually happened, I don't think it would change anything for us, but it, it, it seemed like that was really the intent of pulling back the date just for, for this budget year. I don't know the details because I wasn't on the hearing. I, I saw the date uh, uh, was changed and uh, I checked the analysis, the report, but I didn't see anything there. It was just mentioned that, that the date was changed, but the detail you're sharing, I wasn't aware of. Yeah. I um, mean, obviously it's whatever passes, but it, it just was seemed like that could be a challenge for us if we just delay another year and then have to still adopt 2027. 
Yeah. yeah, it will be even worse. Uh, and this is all I have, this is all I have for, for this week. Uh, the cutoff date again is uh, February 15. Um, and um, it was a short uh, log, only two bills. If you have questions, I can try and, and answer uh, related to these two bills or uh, something uh, um, older. Uh, Ray uh, helped me to uh, modify the approaching and uh, approaching meetings, hearings, uh, and uh, what happened in the past. So I think the information is uh, updated. Uh, there were two or three changes to bills that happened yesterday and today, and I don't I don't have uh, this information now. But I will update I will update the log after we finish with the meeting. So, I mean, can I mention something about, I think it's 1184, the health department water system? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I was just going to bring up that on 1184, um, the uh, UPC tag was very forward thinking, knowing some more of these were going to come up. And so when they rewrote chapter 15, it just says the provisions of this chapter and the Washington State Department of Health. That's all they. That's what they have to require too. So if there's any effective dates, our state amendment already covers. We're already covered that they, um, for any effective date, we don't really have to do much work on top of that, because the the way we wrote wrote it for application of the pot non potable application is the provisions of this chapter and the Washington State Department of Health shall apply to construction, alteration, repair, and alternate water source systems. So it's, we're covered do that one amendment, even if there is a close effective date. Okay, anyone else with, want to discuss any other, other bills? I have a question. Please. Uh, on uh, bill 1150. Since my screen is too small to read it. <laughs> it's not even scheduled, right, for any other action? No, the last, the last date I have is January 19, and it's nothing happened after that date. OK, thank you. I'm sitting in my cold car on my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm with short sleeves and I, I, I feel bad right now. <laughs> it's 32 degrees here. <laughs> okay, well, I guess if no one has any, anything else, I'm, I'm skimming one more time. I saw 11. Oh. oh, go ahead, please. So uh, the cutoff date for the new bills, introducing anything besides budget related is um, Monday? Uh, 15th, uh, is it Monday? Yes. Oh. oh, OK. To drop bills, right? Not to pass out a committee. Right, right, yes, to drop. Uh -huh. new ones. Yeah. Yes, 15 is Monday. OK. Sure. So all and you guys, don't forget Valentine's Day. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. <laughs> okay. Well, with that, maybe we're done with th that agenda item. Um, moving on, any other business that we'd like to discuss today? Okay. Except for Valentine's Day. Hearing none, um, we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone.